Uh, that's, uh, that's become my new favorite song. Is He Worthy? You know why? I'm trying to get ready for heaven. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to worship Him. We get there, we're going to realize He is worthy. What a blessing of all blessing, honor, might, and glory. So I'm going to do something I normally don't do, but I'm going to tell a story about me. I Normally when I preach, I don't tell stories about me. And this happened when I was, say, 14, 15 years old. My family moved. And when my family moved, how many of you moved? Is that a lot of work? It's a lot of work, ain't it? We moved, and we worked real, real hard, and I've never had a problem about sleeping. So when I lay down, I go to sleep. I went to sleep, and in the middle of the night, I was startled and awakened by the trumpet sounding and the house to shaking. The whole windows was shaking and the, and, the, and the trumpet was blowing and I stood up in my bed and I thought, oh no! The rapture occurred and I'm still here. You might laugh a little bit, but that wasn't funny to me. It still ain't funny to me. When that trumpet sounds, I want to be going flying through the air. You see, we had moved, and there was a railroad track closer to my bedroom window than the road up there. And we were right at the crossing. So when that, horn, that train come down through there, he had to blow, and the whole windows in the house should shake and vibrate. I just knew we was having the earthquake, and the trumpet of God had sounded, and the rapture had occurred. So that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Things that's going to take place after these things. So, uh, we can, we, there's all, do you know there's a lot in God's Word about Jesus coming back? But we don't talk about it a whole lot, do we? Oh, we did that back in 2000, didn't we? Oh, and the world's coming to an end. I mean, uh, the computers are going to crash, and gee, the, it's just all going. You know, something I told everybody. Well, you ain't got to worry about that. You know why? Jesus said, "When they are looking for me, how's he going to come? He's going to come as a thief in the night. When they least expect it, they're going to be crying peace and safety, according to God's word." They ain't going to be looking for him. But we're not that way, as we'll see. So, let's, uh, first of all, let's start out in uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We talked about that in Sunday school. There's mysteries. And the Apostle Paul was given the ability to explain these mysteries or what was going to take place. This is a mystery. Uh, this is a mystery, meaning that it's not something God didn't know about, it's something man didn't know about, and God's choosing to reveal it. A mystery. What is this mystery? We shall not all sleep. This sleep right here refers to our bodies. We shall not all, sh all shall die. Uh, we won't die. But we all shall be changed. We're all going to get changed. It goes on to talk about it. We're going to get changed. <clears throat> Let me just read it. In a moment, in a twinkling of eye, at the last trump of God, the trump will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable, and this mortality must put on immortality. Woohoo! <laughs> 
I don't know about y'all, that's a little exciting, ain't it? That we're going to get changed and we're going to get changed in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to get changed. Now, I, I, y'all have to just bear with me right now, but a twinkling of an eye, that's as fast as that. I see your eye to my eye, right? That twinkle comes from me. It travels at the speed of sound. So we're going to get changed in the speed of sound. So it's going to sort of be like Enoch. Well, God's Word said that Enoch didn't see death. Didn't mean he died, didn't die, because, see, we all die, and then we have the judgment according to God's Word. He didn't get to see death. I don't want to see death either, but if Jesus don't come back, I'm going to see death. But if you're alive when Jesus comes to rapture his church, guess what? You're not going to see death. You're going to get changed in a moment at a twinkling of an eye as fast as light travels. That's how fast you're going to get changed. And we're all going to leave this. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so, the, so this is the rapture of the church. So let's look over in uh, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Paul is telling the, the people at Thessalonica about this rapture that's going to occur. And it's a rapture that's going to occur. He says, I do not want you to be uninformed. Uh, King James words use ignorant there. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. Hmm. We talked about that in Sunday school. The rest that don't... I, I don't want you to be to grieve about like the ones that don't have any hope. Man, I tell you what, it, you, ever, you ever been to a funeral of a lost person? No hope. You know, I've only preached one funeral. No, I, that's wrong. I've preached two funerals in my life. First one I preached was a man that didn't know Jesus. His family had atheists in them and that they didn't want a preacher preaching. Well, they invited me. Because <laughs> all, all I did was tell them about uh, if, 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 if people are here, <laughs> if, if, if uh, well, I ain't going to go preach your whole sermon, but if poor old people are here, if he was like Jesus, like this and this and this, but if people could tell you what he knows about Jesus today, hmm. Whew. Man, the people on the other side could tell us a lot about Jesus, couldn't they? Matter of fact, people could too. Mm. But we don't, we're not, hey, I'm sorry, I'm smiling. You see, I'm smiling. We're not in that crowd that don't have no hope. <laughs> we got hope. I got hope. Because what we just sang about, what we believe, I got hope because my Jesus paid for my sins on the cross. That's why I got hope. That's why you got hope. Because of His marvelous grace. I don't deserve to go to heaven. But I'm going to get to go to heaven because Jesus paid for Will's sin. And not only just paid for my sins... I, but, but Jesus came and lived inside of me. Now, I might not look like Jesus all the time, but I'm changed. If you ain't changed, you ain't got Jesus inside, I'm afraid you're going to be like them. Jesus said, I never knew you. you better be, there better be something different in your life. If you got Christ, there's something different in your life. So we're not in that group that don't have any hope. But He's giving us comfort about those that have fallen asleep. In other words, those that have died, and they were Jesus's. They knew Jesus. Verse 14, 
If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. So remember, absent from the body is present with the Lord. When Jesus' follower dies, they go to be with Jesus. Today, that's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, absent from the body is present with the Lord. So, the people that have passed on, that you know, was going to come back with Jesus when this rapture occurs. Now, they're not coming, but they're coming back for a reason, right? They're coming back Wait. They're coming back to get their body. It's going to be the resurrection, and they're going to be raised from the dead. So here we see verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself... Well, let's just stop right there. You know, <laughs> that's why we jokingly say you shouldn't walk on the grave, right? That's why we make that little... It's a joke. Because they're going to precede us. That's what God's Word said. That means they're coming up first. So if... if God chose to have the rapture, you might get blowed right through with a body coming up out of that grave <laughs> because they're going to precede us that are alive. So, uh, I, <clears throat> that's good news, ain't it? My grandmama, she's going to get up one day. Her body's going to get up. Your family, your loved one, they're going to get up. That's what God's Word says here. He says, For He Himself, talking about the Lord Himself, will descend from heaven with a shout. See, that's what I thought. With the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall be with the Lord. You see something here? Jesus is coming back. But Jesus doesn't come all the way to the earth this time. We're going to meet Him in the air. That's what the rapture is, is we're going to meet Him in the air. So we're going to all leave here at the same speed, at the same time, besides the ones that are dead, they're going to precede us. I, the joke was that they got six feet further to go, so they got to get head start. But I don't know if that's the truth or not. But the truth of the matter is, is they're going to get up before we do, because God's Word says that, and then we're all leaving. So if the rapture were to occur right now in this place, we would all leave here at the same speed, even though it's the speed of light or faster. So that means we'd be looking at one another, just like I'm looking at you right now. Because relatively speaking, we're moving at the same speed, so it don't matter if we're doing... We still see each other. Won't that be cool? It will be. Matter of fact, God's Word says that we're supposed to encourage one another. It says, to meet the Lord, we, uh, uh, and thus we shall, all, uh, shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So that's something we ought to be a comfort in one another with. If we know the Lord. But it goes on. There's more to it, ain't there? You know, I'm not a real good singer, but uh, 
but I love to sing. I love to worship him. But we used to sing that song all the time. We don't sing it very much anymore. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will. I thought, my mind, the world are we singing <laughs> about people going to hell? You see, the truth of the matter is, as Jesus said, the way is narrow, and few find it, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. If we go back a few thousand years, we think about the world, they, they were just doing their thing. Living it up. Marriage, giving in marriage. And then God shut the door of the ark. Hmm. Let's look at a passage dealing with that. <clears throat> Probably getting out of order, but that's all right. Uh, let's go over to Second Peter chapter 2. Well, I didn't finish this. I got to stay there. I got to stay where I was at. Y'all go back where I was at. I, I didn't finish where I was at. I got to get to somewhere. <clears throat> All right, let's continue reading. So, the rapture is going to occur. God's going to call His people out, and then the day of the Lord is going to occur. So, let's look at what it says. Verse, uh, chapter 5 of First Corinthians, uh, uh, First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 1. Now as to the time and the epic, epic, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourself know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they, I have that circled, they, it's not we anymore, it's they. They are saying peace and safety. Then dis destruction comes upon them suddenly like the birth pains upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But brethren, you are not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. You are all the sons of the light and the sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do. Let us be alert and sober. For those who sleep, sleep. Uh, for those who sleep, do their sleeping at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now this next verse, I really, really like. I got it underlined in my Bible. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for the attaining of of salvation through our Lord Jesus. Who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you are also are doing what did God's word say that he had destined us for wrath so uh, we, we are all we are all hoping that the <laughs> that the rapture occurs before the tribulation period I don't know about y'all I don't know if we're taking a vote today how many of you want the rapture to occur before the tribulation period some of you just don't care, huh? Well, let me just tell you, just go read Revelation, and you'll change your vote real, real quick, like. When God's Word says that a third of 
all the living creatures in the sea dies in one day. Whew. That's just the sea. And then it talks about the stink of it. You see, every time we start talking, Jesus started talking about the end times. He kept referring to Noah, and Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Lot, referencing it was going to be like those days. Now, when I was a little kid growing up and that train came through there, you know, if you'd have asked me, do you think it's as bad as it was in the days of Noah? In 1970, I'd have probably told you, I just don't know if it's as bad. Hmm. Sort of changed my opinion of what it is today, huh? You know, this corona thing, it, it's bad. But it's made me look at something else that's a whole lot worse. You realize in America that we aborted more babies than when Americans killed each other in the Civil War this year. You see, and we're God's not American, is he? God's God of the whole world. So this corona thing has got me to looking at the world meter. You know in the world 35 million babies have been aborted this year you got that number 35 million babies you think it as bad as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah in the days of Noah when the world is just living its things doing its own thing you know I heard somebody say one time the worst revolution it ever was was a revolution in the 60's when we thought that we could have free love and we could just go out and have sex with anybody we wanted to have sex with, but now our solution is is we just abort. What comes out of that? You see, God sees all this. We're sometimes we're done like this, ain't we? We're blinded. We're not we're not supposed to look at this. God sees all this. We're we're right to be like the days of Noah. And you see, but I got good news. It says right there, encourage one another. You know how I'm going to encourage you? It says God has not destined us for wrath. That means I, I believe that we are pre-tribulation. And I'll go on and talk to the, a little bit about that in a minute. But we're, we're not destined for wrath. I guarantee you, I have not found any biblical teacher anywhere that says we'll go past the three and a half a year mark of the tribulation period. Because after the three and a half year point, what happens at the three and a half year po- point of the tribulation period? The abomination of desolation occurs in the temple when the antichrist goes into the holiest of holies and does something there that's an abomination to God and God says that's enough and he pours out his wrath on the world I don't know what that is my mama (laughs) I'm going to preach about my mama now my mama says it's might be that the 
he commits acts of homosexuality in the holies of holies. See, our world, <laughs> our world don't want to, well, God didn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality. What? Duh! Y'all ain't reading the same book I am. I mean, I'm, I'm very poor reader and very ignorant. I have a hard time understanding a lot of things, but I, I ain't no way I get that out of Scripture. You just go over and read Jude. I mean, it's just real obvious that he destroyed them because of their sexual immorality and their lasciviousness and all them big old words like that. So let's look. Why is God... Uh, oh, I, I'm probably just going to mention this. So for over in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, it talks about how God didn't spare the angels that sinned. God didn't spare Noah and the, uh, uh, the people of the ancient world when they sinned. But, and how the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, that, uh, that they didn't, uh, He didn't spare them. And it, it, how he, uh, but what happens before God pours out His wrath? He pulls His people out. Think about that. He pulled eight people out of the whole world. He pulled the people out of Lot, his two daughters, and his wife. And his wife didn't make it. God had destitute us for wrath. <laughs> We ought to encourage one another in this that we I don't believe we're going to go through the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. I personally believe, as we we'll look at this scripture now, we're not going to go through the first three and a half. Go to Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two. So Paul's writing his second letter to the Thessalonians and he says this in chapter 2. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus and our gathering together to Him. Notice there's two different events there he's talking about. He's talking about when he, Jesus comes <laughs> and when we're gathered together to Him, the rapture of the church that you all may not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Because somebody was preaching in that, uh, that Jesus had already come back. But the day of the Lord is a bad day. Verse 3, let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the, help me out, Brett, apostasy, there we go, apostasy comes first, the falling away. Hmm. Is that occurring? Is that occurring? People that used to be faithful are not faithful. You see, we, we've only got little bitty eyes on, don't we? We can't see what God sees. God sees the whole world. Is that I don't know whether that's going on in the whole world or not. But before the day of the Lord comes, we're going to see a falling away. I think it's happening around us. The second thing, the and the man of lawlessness is revealed. There'll be a time in history when he's revealed, the son of destruction. 
who oppresses and exalts himself over every... Well, let me stop right there. So, the man of lawlessness. You've heard all about him, the, the Antichrist, the beast, the red dragon, the image of the dragon. All these are going to take place and they are going to set up and they uh, power. <laughs> I just was thinking, uh, by the way, we're supposed to do something Tuesday, right? We're supposed to vote. The Antichrist, he ain't going to be like who we get to vote for. Because the world is going to be going, yes, yes, this is who we need to lead us. Yes, we'll follow you. Yes, this is a good idea. Let's do away with the money and let's just put a little chip right there. Or, 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 or why don't we just do a chip right there in our little phone or something? And why don't we just put something in our little ear all the time we can walk around with so that we know where you're at at all times? The world, the, listen, the world is going to love the Antichrist. The world's going to accept him. The world's going to see him as a savior. Man, if we had a good charismatic person running for president right now, <laughs> well, we'd probably change our vote, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of humor in that, ain't it? We ain't, got, we ain't got a choice on who we vote for. We got to stand before Jesus one day, and give an account of who we voted for and who represents us. And it's it's pretty obvious. If they don't stand for life. They ain't standing for God at all. Oh. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> I'm not the preacher here, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, verse 4. Uh, who oppresses and exalts himself over every so-called God and object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? You see, the world's going to love this Antichrist more than they love Christ because he is openly and publicly. He, he will openly and publicly be slain, according to God's word, with a sword, and then be healed. You see, I remember when I was a young man, I used to couldn't figure out how all the world was going to see Jesus at once. It's pretty obvious today, ain't it? It's pretty obvious, ain't it? We can see what happens all over the world, all at once. Fast as electrodes or ever what they are getting around the earth. But the world's going to love this Antichrist because he, did, he does die. The Bible says he dies, he gets slain. And he's going to raise him back. He's going to be like Christ in that. And the world's going to worship him. But why can't he... And, and, again, and, and he, listen, and the devil don't know when Jesus is coming back, does he? So the devil, he's got to keep somebody ready to be the Antichrist at all times. He's got to have a man. See, the Antichrist is a man. He's got to have a man sold out to him. And you could go all through history looking at the ugly men. But you know what happens? <laughs> you know what happens when the devil gets through with those men? We'll just start with one, Judas. What happens to Judas when the devil gets through with you? Kill yourself. When the devil got through with Hitler, what did he do? Killed himself. When the devil gets through with you, you it's bad. 
So this man, the devil, has got ready to, to move into place and in power. And he's going to exalt himself. But something's restraining him. Look on verse 6. Now you all know what restrains him now so that he, that in his time he may be revealed. So something's restraining him. Verse 7. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains him will do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to the end by his appearance at his second coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accordance with the activity of Satan and all power and signs and false wonders. So, who is this that's restraining him? I believe it's us. It's God's Spirit in the church. You see, if the, the man of lawlessness was revealed today, the Spirit in us would cry out and say, You are the Antichrist. We would be preaching and teaching against him. We would be calling that out. But if God snatches us all out, then he's not restrained anymore. And I personally believe he's going to take power from the snatching out. Because people are going to be scared. Hey, my, bro my neighbor just disappeared. So he's going to come up with this idea. Well, I'll keep track of you. Here you go. You just put this chip right here. You put this little chip right here. And I'll keep track of you, and we'll know where you're at at all times. So if you go to missing, we'll know where you went missing at. You see, that he's going to take power from that. And he when... when the snatching occurs, but keep on. Verse 10. Now with all deception and wickedness of those who perish, because, now listen to this, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. Talking about someone who had an opportunity but didn't take it. Listen to what it says, verse 11. And for this reason, God will send upon them, notice it's them, not us, a deluding influence so that they might believe what is false in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. You see what God's saying? Can you get saved today? Yes. God's Spirit. Now, now listen, I, 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 I said this here just a little while ago, and I believe this is true. Man, I, I, preachers that brag on themselves while they're preaching, i got a problem with them. You know them preachers that say, well, that's good preaching, ain't it? Well, foot. Who are you to judge? The only way it's good preaching is if God's Spirit's dealing with somebody. They can be up there babbling and carrying on and saying whatever they want to say, but the only way anything's going to get done is for God to speak to an individual. The only way anybody's going to get saved is for God to draw the individual. But if God has drawn you in this period of grace, you've had an opportunity to get saved right now. And God says, you're going to believe a lie after the rapture. You see, we would think, well, God dealt with me now. Well, after the rapture, I'll just run to Jesus. Remember, 
Nobody gets saved unless God draws them. Matter of fact, God is so strong here. He says he, He's going to make people believe a lie. He's going to make them believe what is wrong. They, he's going to make them believe that this Antichrist is who they need to follow. Because, why? Because they rejected Him when they had a free reign. They chose chose to live in their sin. You should see that right there? It says that they took pleasure in their wickedness. They just, hey, <laughs> you know the old saying, God, I'll get saved, but I want, I want to enjoy my sin. I want to sow, sow my wild oaks right now. Lord, I'll come to you. Listen, you don't get to choose that, and especially in these end times. So, We can, you, we can go look and look and look in verses and verses and verses and verses. The question is, are you ready? That, that's real. Jesus said, Jesus said to the uh, ten virgins, and that ten virgins could have very well be talking about the rapture of the church. He said, are you ready? Do you have oil in your lamps? Do you have God's Spirit inside of you? Have you been changed? Or are you, are you going to the... His brother Don preached a sermon on that. Ten virgins, they all slept. They all went to the same roof. They all went, slept under the same place. They all looked the same. But five of them had oil, five of them didn't. I don't know, was Jesus saying out of the people that think they're saved, only 50% of them get to heaven? I don't know. He, he could have chose any number to say these, these. He said five and five. You see, Jesus says, pay attention to the story of the fig tree when you see that the fig tree is putting forth its green leaves and getting tight you know that the season is near and when we look at all of this all these different things of the way the world is and, and does it look like the days of Noah is there earthquakes is there wars is there rumors of wars is all these things happening and taking place? Is the church falling away? Is it a right time for a world leader? When we see all these things, we, we ought to be encouraging one another that Jesus is getting close to coming back. And then when we comes back, we will stand before him at the Bema seat of whether I gain rewards or lose rewards if you're a Christian. If you're lost, you'll stand before the great white throne. Nobody gets saved at the great white throne. So I wonder. It's after these things. What's coming? We don't talk about it a whole lot. But it's coming. Jesus is coming. So are you ready? Are you ready? Do you have Him in your life? Or are you busy about doing the things that don't really matter? You see, I, I, I couldn't help but think our church has been dealing with all the mold and stuff. <laughs> Jesus said it was going to be like that, didn't He? <laughs> he said it's going it's to rust and decay and 
and mold and mildew and all that. But we, we're not. We ought to be loving each other, encouraging each other. Because we're going to spend eternity together because of Him. Praise team, come. So, what does your life look like? Are you worshiping Him now? Do you have that oil in your life? Are you changed? Are you changed?